as a hyper-connected pro-business hub. Bridging the East and the West, Dubai offers unrivaled access to the world's fastest growing economy. And in this special episode, we have focused on two major sectors of the Dubai UAE market, gems and jewellery and healthcare sector. The UAE gems and jewellery market is expected to reach 10.71 billion US dollars by 2027. While rapid development in the Dubai healthcare sector is attracting businesses to invest more in it. Perseverance, dedication and above all else passion. That signifies what it takes to be an entrepreneur and a successful one here in the Dubai UAE market and that also are the two interviews I'm bringing you here on the show today as part of this week-long showcase from Dubai. Hello and welcome, I'm Sunanda Jai Seelan joining you and bringing you stories as part of this week-long special series on the show. Our first interview tonight is with Amit Dhamani of Dhamani Jewels, a second generation entrepreneur who took his father's business and made it a global major. Our second interview is with Dr. Ibtisam Al Bastaki, someone who's at the center and at the forefront of all the changes taking place in the healthcare and the health tech space. Listen. In. Dubai, the city of gold, is popular worldwide for its gold jewelries, but gems and diamonds play a critical role in this. And Dhamani Jewels Group is a major contributor to Dubai's gem and jewelry market. Founded in 1969 in India, Dhamani Jewels covers the entire spectrum of jewelry business from sourcing, manufacturing, and cutting of stones to retailing of fine diamond and color stone jewelry. It is headed by Amit Dhamani, Managing Director of Dhamani Jewels Group, who is also the second generation entrepreneur. Amit Dhamani is a Harvard Business School alumni and is on the board of directors at the Dubai Diamond Exchange and the Dubai Gold and Jewelry Group. Amit, thank you so much for speaking with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow. The money and the business and the company is something that everyone knows, not just those who are perhaps looking at buying jewellery or gold or you know gemstones. And even as the company has grown, this was of course set up by your father way back in India, but the company has grown and you have grown with the company because you have led this, this expansion from the forefront. My question as we're kicking off today's interview, what has your journey as an entrepreneur been like even as the company has grown? So I'm a second generation jeweler. My father started in 1969. We are originally from Rajasthan, Jaipur. Mm. And I moved to Thailand in 1989 just after my early education. And early 90s, it was my first trip to uh, Dubai. My father being an early entrepreneur was a dealer of gemstones. And when I started the business, Dubai uh, was my place where I was making trips from Thailand. And Thailand being a gemstone center of the world, I expanded the business other than emeralds and rubies and sapphires, which was the product of the country. At the same time, we expanded our business in loose diamonds, diamond jewelry, jewelry manufacturing. So as the time moved on, we elaborated our offering to customers. And it was more customer centricity, which really moved forward to you see where we are today. And then when we came to Dubai in mid 90s, uh, that really was a big transformational journey for Damani coming to the retail business in early 2000. Mm. So when you set up in 91 to, you know, the market now, uh, uh, both your company as well as just the economy and the industry, what has really, what has been the biggest change? I think the most amazing thing about Dubai and UAE is the vision of the rulers and the mm. country. You know, they have been very, very forward looking. I remember my early days when I started here, we can see the government policies, the support they used to provide to the industry, to the, to the journal public and business at large. They were very business centric. Their always ideas or thoughts was how to grow this segment, the road, this industry or other industry. So certainly the ecosystem growth and development, what we've seen in Dubai and UAE is tremendous. We being a right place, right time and positioning ourselves in the right spot 
helped us to grow along with the ecosystem of Dubai and what we see today is certainly an amazing transformation in nearly 30 years where we are. We do a lot of interviews with family owned and run businesses because uh, uh, most or at least a lot of the SMBs in India that we talk to are family owned and run businesses. You are the oldest of three brothers I understand and all of you are very closely involved in the business and my question is is there a secret sauce? What is the secret really as far as your success is concerned as a family owned and run business? That's an interesting question and as being second generation we say when my father started he started this company on his own in 1969. When I joined in 89 and further during the years my brothers they joined in 93 and 95. We felt there is so much depth in the same industry that if you really go across various verticals in the same industry the growth is there. Sometimes people like to venture out in different industries and that's also fine. But we as family and business saw the scope that every time we move forward, there are more inflection points to grow within the industry. So the transformation from loose gems to diamonds to jewelry to retail, which happened in 2000, is certainly a biggest learning that if the growth allows you and the market horizon allows you, why not you grow in the segment which you are specialized in? So specialization is a key. India-UAE Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, or CEPA, which came into effect on May 1st, is a significant milestone in the trade relations between the two countries. And it is expected to boost the total value of bilateral trade in goods to over $100 billion and trade in services to over $15 billion within five years. I want to take a step back at this point and really talk about the industry itself and the recent announcement of the SEPA. It's still early days, but uh, it has been given an even further boost to the gems, jewelry, the gold business and industry. By way of strategy, um, you know, how excited are you by this announcement? Uh, what would you have to say to a small business that's watching today's interview based in India, wants to do trade in this region, what would you have to say? I would like to commend the government of India and UAE to really look uh, for this amazing agreement of SEPA, which is beyond borders. Mm -hmm. If you see the synergy and the partnership between India and UAE, the border, cross-border trade over the years has been phenomenal. SEPA just strengthened that relationship to a next level. It provides the entrepreneurs and businesses at both levels to grow in those countries and beyond. And I think there are question for Indian entrepreneurs, if you're asking, I think it's a big good chance of growth for the entrepreneurs from India to see Dubai and UAE as a base of their growth in the GCC region and beyond. The kind of policies, the proximity, the center where Dubai is in terms of gems and jewelry allows global buyers and visitors who come to Dubai. So for them to position their business or brand in UAE will help them to grow their business at a faster pace beyond their original businesses in India. Hmm. So what the SEPA does is of course remove that 5% uh, duty. F would you as one of the or the leading player when it comes to the space would you like to see more what's the way forward looking like you know what other changes perhaps would SEPA bring about? I think SEPA certainly opens the mind in terms of the horizon of the manufacturing. Imagine companies like us, uh, you know, we don't have any manufacturing in India, but due to SEPA, we can think of starting some kind of a production for some kind of support manufacturing uh, services, which was not the case before. A repolishing, you know, repair, so on and so forth. So goods can be freely moved between the countries. At the same time, the new product development. And the same can apply for the companies who are based in India to look at the markets here and see that how Dubai can be a distribution center for their products. So we will see more and more certainly offices and companies opening from Indian entrepreneurs in UAE. At the same time, we will see a lot of UAE entrepreneurs seeing backwards uh, to see in India at back end how they can utilize that as a big place of growth and manufacturing. Okay, uh, a last question then. Something that you have learned in your personal and professional journey that has helped you immensely along in your career that you would want to use as advice for our entrepreneurs today? I think focus is the key. Uh, you know, many times entrepreneurs and including us when we have seen this growth over the years, every time we can get carried away with variety of new ideas and which is fine. 
but certainly we can have like innovation hub within the company. All the new ideas can be tried at a smaller testing level. But the focus where we think we really have a unique selling point, we make a differentiation, we are making a difference to a customer's life. If you get more deeper in that, the customer sees that over a period of time, they support you, they let you grow, and the markets also support you. And this is where we feel focus in business, focus on staff, team, management, policy, I think focus is a key. And we believe the following works in 2080 scenario, you know, 20% of things give 80% of result, and we are only focusing on the 20% key differentiators in our company. Thank you so much for your time and wishing you all the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's time for a quick commercial break on that note. On the other side, a special conversation with the Dubai Health Authority. Welcome back. You're with us here on this week-long showcase coming to you live and exclusive from Dubai. Tonight, in this special segment, a conversation with Dubai Health Authority. Dubai and the MENA region as a whole are preparing for a major push in PPP enhancements and Dr. Iptesam Al Bastaki, Director of Investment and Public-Private Partnership Department of Dubai Health Authority is positive that PPP investments will pave the way for social infrastructure change within the region. Dr. Al Bastaki is a medical physician and graduated from Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. Before taking up her current role, she was heading the health strategy and performance team at Prime Minister office to aim and achieve the UAE Vision 2021. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with us here on Times Network, talking about all the changes that we're seeing when it comes to healthcare, when it comes to technology and healthcare, and really the intersection between the two. And before we come to all the exciting work that's happening, your personal journey as well has been equally exciting. And just for the sake of our viewers, you know, a sneak peek into what this has been like for you. Definitely an Emirati a woman who studied in Royal College of Surgeon in Ireland, Dublin, who traveled at the age of 18 abroad and I did all my medical career over there. I came back and uh, I have worked in different um, various fields within healthcare sectors, from hands-on patient for past 10 years. Now next, uh, almost like 12 years, I'm more into the management and leadership role. So I work between Dubai Health Authority, Ministry of Health. I was leading at one stage the health uh, section in Prime Minister office as well as I had some role uh, with the private entity for almost four years before joining back to Dubai Health Authority. The past two years have been um, uh, challenging to say the least for all sectors and industries across the world, especially for the healthcare industry, which had to be at the forefront of all the changes and you know, responding even faster than understanding perhaps what was going on. Uh, what has this really meant for you at DHN? What has it meant for the healthcare sector here in the Dubai UAE market? So if you look at Dubai market, basically it's uh, been expanding um, very nicely among the public and the private healthcare sector. And that's because Dubai is a hub and uh, Dubai is considered to have more than 200 nationalities. Their age group is ranged between 15 to 65, 68 years of age. Mm -hmm. So this is, will give you even kind of like a, an insight what kind of prevalence of disease they can uh, expect and what basically we need to be or prepare ourselves for it. And then Dubai is a gateway for, you know, for transport, port, Emirates airline, has made a lot of distinguish and adding value to attract attract a lot of investors and entrepreneurs. And if you look at Dubai market, Dubai uh, as an outpatients and inpatients 
uh, the market shares is 80% given to the private sector. So that's you will know even how the leadership is moving towards in attracting the investors and private uh, entities, as well as bringing the, the know-how and the expertise to the field. And most of the regulatory uh, services is done by the, by the uh, Dubai Health Authority. So therefore, we were working so hard in terms of building a proper governance structure for ensuring the clinical governance outcome. And on top of this, it's a destination for health tourism as well. And this has made Dubai an attractive uh, and a hub for a lot of countries. Technology, of course, has also changed the access to healthcare, you know, uh, especially in India. Technology and telemedicine has ensured that those people who don't previously have access to good quality healthcare are now able to get it thanks to technology. How is technology transformed? And how is healthcare really transformed thanks to technology here? Uh, if you go back to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum in 2019, January, he announced the 50th Charter mm -hmm. and he very much emphasized on uh, uh, a doctor for every citizen. Mm -hmm. And of course, without technology, you can't do that. So this is before even the pandemic. And of course, when the pandemic hit, all global world and the countries that's basically has boomed the technology and especially telemedicine teleconsultation and telecounseling so the whole uh, healthcare system has changed from the normal way of practicing to the new norm where the technology has a lot of impact in delivering the care uh, and easing the accessibility for the patient from physical and financially because even you know uh, financial aspect is more cost effective by using the technology itself to reach out to your uh, customers or to reach out to the physician itself. As part of the Dubai strategic vision for the next couple of years, just talk to us about what and where do you see healthcare and the DHA being positioned? We had a vision of 2021, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, there is a huge vision until 2071. So the, we are working in a plan. So that's plan uh, mainly uh, to emphasize on having a proper integrated health system between the public and the private sectors, encouraging the training programs among the, uh, the, uh, the people, as well as emphasizes on the scientific research. So these are the three pillars, which is very much in, uh, essentials to build up a proper assets within the, within the country. And of course, this will have an impact on the patients or the customers, as well as the payers, as well as the providers. So this is uh, actually where we are uh, positioning ourselves and um, uh, we did a lot of work in terms of the capacity planning. We identified our gaps and opportunities and we work closely with our private partners. Since you were saying private, uh, I want to talk about the PPP or the private-public partnership model uh, that exists here in Dubai and it's unique and that's something that you are, you know, uh, uh, passionate about. In India as well, we have a lot of PPP when it comes to the healthcare space. And that is a necessity in India to reach the kind of population that we have. Why PPP is important according to you? And just talk to our viewers about, you know, the model, the strategy, etc. behind it. I mean, uh, in Dubai, uh, we have a PPP law which been established in 2015, law number 22 by Department of Finance and uh, the law it has uh, as well its own guideline which will support all the investors who wants to enter the market or interested to go for PPP uh, projects. This will give them a lot of support uh, in terms how to do the PPP within our market. The other thing it's uh, this year we are closing two projects. One of them is Center of Excellence of Cardiology and this project is design, build, operate, uh, facility management and transfer third of the projects after a period of time and the facility management was being given to the uh, private sector. Uh, uh, and on the other hand, we are doing long-term care, which is a concession model, where all the, uh, the element of the PPP from design until operate, until transfer, it's being handed over to the private sector. So we have more of those projects coming up in the future, and I think this will open a lot of door for investors to come into our market. Uh, my last few questions, and I want to talk about uh uh, first off, why Dubai is such a great market for entrepreneurs who are perhaps either looking at setting up shop here in the country, in the region, uh, or are maybe expanding. 
maybe the top three or four reasons that you want to through this interview tell them this is why you should be here I mean there are three main key drivers we need to focus on first and that's will make a, a kind of like a tool for the investors and entrepreneur to come in first of all we are a growing populations uh, in Dubai and the uh, and as well as in UAE and the other thing it's uh, we have a mandatory health insurance uh, the expenditures has been rising 4.8 percent from 2018 to 2019 and mainly it was going to the curative healthcare services I feel it's pretty much very uh, important uh, drivers which attract a lot of investors as well as the entrepreneurs as far as investments go you know, uh, entrepreneurs who are in the healthcare space in India are seeing massive investments coming in, uh, perhaps also pushed somewhat by the pandemic and the need that we're seeing for services like healthcare in India. Uh, what's the situation like when it comes to private investment and your advice perhaps for someone who's looking at investments, what's the outlook? I think uh, there is a lot of opportunities in Dubai. Mm -hmm. There is a still services we did not tap in and I feel like, um, uh, you know, a lot of investors can come in and to look at it. We have released recently our new investment guide, healthcare guide, uh, 2021 versions. We'll give them a lot of insight in terms of demand and supply, as well as the uh, gaps and opportunities. And this will show them what is Dubai's plan for the next two to three years and five to eight years. And this is will, uh, will give them a lot of support in terms of where they need to invest and how even they can ensure the sustainability of their investments. Thank you so much for this interview. That's been fantastic. Pleasure having me today. Thank you. Proactive measures being taken by the government here in Dubai, including encouraging all its citizens to get vaccinated and providing an enabling ecosystem, as well as a vibrant economy. All of that contributing to making Dubai a great place to do business. Thank you so much for watching today's interview. We are out of time, but we're going to continue bringing you more such incisive interviews as part of this week-long showcase on the leaders of tomorrow in Dubai. Thanks for watching.